Stand-up comedy. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Um, we are here today to do some performing. Uh, each comedian is going to have about 10 minutes. Um, I'm one of them, and there's uh, eight others. So, um, as always, be respectful and uh, try not to heckle, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So, that's it. There are cookies going around. Quick question. Um, I've asked this a bunch of times. <laughs> By the way, my name's Justin. This is my place. Oh, yeah. Thank you. So, everyone, thank you, Justin. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to start then, and uh, yeah. like looking forward to doing it like I was in math class and the entire time I was like I can't wait to get back home and assault my dick <laughs> and I feel like it's past I miss I miss being able to jerk off to anything like a picture of a blurry ass or maybe it was an armpit kind of like lying here I'm not sure to this day but it was enough I miss when I could just draw two circles on a paper like a boob and that was I could let it fly <laughs> but I've, I've changed now I'm more mature so today, for instance, I uh, jerked off at 2 p.m. while browsing Reddit. <laughs> Not even really feeling anything. I, I guess I just like to multitask. <laughs> and uh, I guess that's kind of like the millennial version of like reading the news and drinking your coffee in the morning. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think masturbation just kind of has lost its appeal to me, at least. And maybe that's because I started when I was in sixth grade. Um, and one of the crazy things about that is that when I started, I didn't know if anyone else did it because no one else talked about it. And so in my head, I was like, I think I'm the first one who's like figured this out, I guess. <laughs> and I'd be in my group of friends and we'd all be just talking about like, you know, sixth grade or stuff like Pokemon. And I was like trying to get a vibe if anyone else knew what was going on. And I was like, yeah, Pikachu's great, but have you guys like done this yet at all? No? And I didn't know what the word was or what the motion was, so I was just doing sign language near my penis. And <laughs> no one was really sure what I was talking about. And I guess, you know, because I was you know, young and naive, I didn't really understand. I, I thought that since, you know, everyone has the materials to do it, you know, you have a hand and a penis, but you're not doing it, that maybe I'm special. Maybe my hand had, like, a special touch. <laughs> I thought I was like King Midas, but instead of everything I touch turn to gold, any penis I touch, I can just make nut. <laughs> and I was like, I can never shake anyone's hand ever again. They're like, they know. They'd be like, his grip's different. His grip's different. And then all of a sudden, all my life, all my life, I would just have to be jerking off dudes for the rest of my life. And I had dreams at the time. Granted, it was beating myself off in the sixth grade, but dreams nonetheless. I mean, thankfully though, you know, I learned from that and I grew out of it. And I knew, I learned that, you know, other people jerk off, too. And, uh, one of the, uh... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what? <laughs> um, and I guess, you know, a question you might, guys might have is, you know, why am I talking about jerking off? Um, and trust me, I actually, you know, was debating if I should even talk about this today. Um, and then I jerked off. And I realized, <laughs> yeah, no, I actually do really want to talk about it. <laughs> that post not clarity, right? <laughs> That's fucking crazy to me, because... Post on clarity is you can have like the most like horrible like horny thoughts and then as soon as you jerk off it just goes away yes. on the tissue. Um, <laughs> and for me I think my kind of horny thoughts and like my horny goggles I like to call them are horrible, right? Like I could be at Earhart Diamond Court and I just swiped in and the lady took you know my card and she said I have insufficient swipes. And I'm like damn, that's a really weird way to say you want to fuck right now. <laughs> piggybacking off of that, I think uh, Ratatouille should have had more films. <laughs> I guess for people who haven't watched Ratatouille, basically the premise is there's this rat named Remy, right? Um, and he wants to be a chef, but he's a rat, so he can't do that. 
Um, and he, you know, meets this guy named Linguini who's working in this uh, different Gusto's, which is his restaurant, and figures out he can control Linguini by his hair. And as a result, Linguini elevates his status to become a chef. And basically, the moral of the movie is that while not everyone can be a great artist, a great artist can come from anywhere. And to me, that's like really inspirational. But at the same time, like from anywhere, like are we sure that's accurate? Like there's definitely some obsoletes like Mars. We're not gonna have anyone from Mars coming. <laughs> Antarctica. Wyoming, like I don't, think, I don't think anyone from those places could have talent. <laughs> and uh, I just, you know, I think it's such a great idea to have the concept of animals kind of controlling people. I think that's super interesting. Um, and I think, you know, I want a spinoff where instead of a rat, where he wants to, you know, be a chef, it's a rat who wants to be a porn star. <laughs> but because he's a rat, like getting into the porn business is like pretty tough. But all of a sudden, one day, he meets this guy who's down on his luck, right? This porn star who, quite frankly, like, his fuck game is just abysmal. And everyone's like, why are you still in this industry? And the rat meets, and he's like, yo, man, like, I can control you by tugging on your hair, and, like, I'll do the fucking. And the guy's like, I don't speak rap. But somehow, <laughs> somehow it works out. And, and six months later, this porn star is at the top of his game, right? And he's the best porn star in the industry and the business, and he's winning his awards at the Pornhub Awards, the best male actor. And on speech, he's like, I want to thank my family and my friends for pushing me here, but I have something to admit, to say. Um, and while I thought I was fucking this whole time, and he takes off his comically large top hat and <laughs> all his shoes, this rat was the one who's been doing it all along. And instead of rat or two, we can call it like a rat tile dysfunction or something. <laughs> I'm still going through like puberty, just not like vertically anymore. Um, it's a lot of like energy in my body dedicating to my facial hair, um, which is unfortunate because if I don't shave it every so often, I either look like I serve noodles for a living or I touch kids. So that's unfortunate. One of the things with you know more hair is actually I have to deal with hygiene. Fun fact: Asians just don't smell as bad as other races. And that's just something that you guys should know. And I'm Korean, and actually Koreans are a, they're under Asian people for everyone who doesn't know that. Um, they uh, actually have a gene where they just don't have as much body odor as anyone else. And it's so prevalent, in fact, in Korea that if you were trying to find body deodorant, you probably couldn't find it. Which I guess is kind of familiar with the situation here, given that our engineering students seem to have the same issue. <laughs> and, uh, um, but, you know, so basically that means that if I, you know, I worked out and I sweat a lot, the worst I smell like is, I'd say, scotch tape. <laughs> and none of you guys have probably smelled scotch tape, but if you had taken the time to smell it and reflect on it, you'd probably be like, think, oh, I wish I could be smelling anything else but this right now. <laughs> it's not a great smell, but it's also not unpleasant, pleasant unless you focus on it, I guess. Um, and I, I, I was always wondering, like, why are Koreans the ones that don't smell as bad? Like, why did God choose us, I guess? And I couldn't figure it out until recently when I was in a room similar to this and I ripped ass. And everyone else blamed everyone but me. <laughs> I was like, this is what privilege feels like. <laughs> All of a sudden, like last year, I just started smelling like my membership on my genetic lottery like ended. <laughs> and at first, I didn't really notice because, you know, I, no one really, I guess, told me, but people would make kind of like the stink face when they walked by me, you know, like this one where it's like, <laughs> like that face. And honestly, like, I guess I should have kind of realized what they were trying to say, but I just thought they were just being really racist and making fun of my facial features. <laughs> Which is wrong, obviously, but sometimes I thought it was pretty accurate. So like, I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be mad at that. Um, but anyway, so yeah, I started to smell, and no one actually told me for weeks until one person you know, told me to say, hey man, you smell. I was taken back, obviously, because the dude was blind. And I just feel like as a blind person, that's a very critical thing to say in your situation. Like if I was in a shitty mood and he was like, you smell, I could have like walked up, take his walking stick, ran away. He would have never known who it was. Or like he would have called the police later and he's like, police, I'm so, I've just been robbed. And the police would be like, oh no, I don't, I don't know how the police.
please. <laughs> be like, can you describe this person at all? Like any facial features or anything like that? And be like, no. <laughs> I'm lying. <laughs> but you know what, actually? He kind of smelled like scotch. <laughs> Thanks, guys.